And I'm going to invite the children to come forward now. Great. Well, I brought some bread today. How many of you like bread? Yeah? What do you like to put on your bread? Butter and cream cheese. OK. Well, and after church, we often have bagels and cream cheese, don't we? And butter and different things. On this plate, we have different kinds of bread. What do you notice about it? The skin is different. That's good. The crust. Yeah, we've got some that has little oatmeal in the crust, some that doesn't. And it's all different colors, too, isn't it? And that's important. It reminds us of all of life, right? And people all different colors, too, right? And each one tastes a little different, too. Would you like to break off a little piece and taste one of the breads? Whichever one you want, just break a piece, OK? And Mira, would you like to try some bread? That one? Yeah, well, then we'll try all different ones. How does that taste? Good? It's good, even by itself, without any spreads. Now, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said that because Jesus likes to teach us about God, and Jesus brings God's presence to us. So Jesus feeds us in a different way. This bread fills our tummies, right? And it fills our bodies, and it makes our bodies strong. Look what I brought today, a little barbell. Do you ever see people lift weights? They lift weights to become strong. Did you ever lift a weight? This one's a little heavy. Do you think you can lift it? It's a little heavy, but not too bad, right? Do you want to pass that on? You did too, Sheena? Oh, wow. Try lifting that. Does that make you strong? Yeah, that could make your arms strong if you do enough of those. That's good. It's very light. She's been practicing, that's why. And now let's let Mira try. Can you do it? And if it's heavy, you use both hands. Smart girl. There you go. Yay. Good job. OK, I'll take that from you now. Yeah, so that's a way to strengthen our muscles. But Jesus, the bread of life, Jesus wants to strengthen our hearts and our souls. Hello there. So Jesus, what does Jesus call himself? The bread of life. Can you say it with me? Bread of life. Yeah. Would you like some pieces of bread? You can break up a piece of one that you like. Or if you're really hungry, take a whole piece. I can. <laughs> no, they're going to get half a piece. That's fine. But Jesus feeds our souls just like the bread helps our bodies to be strong, right? How does Jesus feed our souls? Any ideas? Well, Jesus gives us his love. And his love makes us feel good inside. And Jesus teaches us how to live in the world. And so when we do what he says, it's like we're eating the bread. We're eating the bread of his teachings. Mm. And then we do those things, and we become strong in Christ. So I'm glad you liked the bread. Would you like another little piece before we finish? This is nice, fresh bread, so it tastes very good. Oh, there's plenty here. Would you like one more piece? OK. OK, good. Let's say a prayer together, OK? Everybody will bow your heads, stop for a moment on the eating, and just talk to God, OK? Jesus, thank you for coming into the world to teach us how to live, to teach us how to love like you love, Thank you for making us strong, not our muscles like the weights, but our hearts, so that we could love others as you have loved us. Amen. Hey guys, thanks for coming up. I'm glad you enjoyed the bread. Today comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. 
And in his word, I hope, my soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And our second lesson comes from John's Gospel, chapter 6, various verses. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The word of the Lord. Friends, please stand if you are able and join in our next hymn, Fill My Cup, Lord, 641 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Be seated. And let us pray. O Holy One, come be with us in this place. Open our hearts, our minds to you. Let your Holy Spirit be present to speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last week, Bruce talked to you about Jesus feeding a crowd with bread. And I believe that Jesus used these feeding times, one, to satisfy actual physical hunger and needs of people because he cares about people's physical needs, but also as teaching moments about the spiritual life. And so in today's portion of the Gospel of John, we see how Jesus then connects that bread of life with the spiritual. And as we are fed both physically and spiritually, then we can say, now we are satisfied. Now we are satisfied. And as we are fed, we are also enabled to feed others, both physically, as focused on last week, and spiritually, making holistic ministry possible to the whole person. So Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So one of the first things about that is that he was talking about forming a relationship with us to feed us. 
I am the bread of life. He wants us to come to him in a relationship that will nurture and sustain our spiritual lives. One preacher, Reverend Skidmore, in a sermon on the bread of life, says that three groups of people lost interest in Jesus when he began to connect that bread with the spiritual. And one group was the materialists, another the legalists, looking for a religion of rules rather than relationship. And the other was the sensationalists looking for miracles, just interested in the multiplication gift. So I thought that was a rather interesting insight. But Jesus becomes bread of life to be in relationship to us. And that's the essence of our faith is that relationship. I recently read an account by Sarah Miles about her first experience of communion at age 46 as a person who didn't believe in Jesus. She wasn't even sure if he ever existed. And yet, as she received the bread of the presence of Christ. That's also an experience that Annie Lamott had and then moved from atheism to faith. So we know that Jesus in relation to us, the bread of life found in the bread of communion is very, very powerful. So this text has been connected with communion very closely, but it's about more than that. Why a relationship with Jesus? Because Christ was one with God and brought us God's wisdom, God's teachings. And I think that it's very beautiful to look at this saying in relation to the other sayings in John. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the good shepherd, the light of the world, the resurrection, the vine. So Jesus has such union with God that he's able to speak those words of God to us. He's one in a long line of mystical prophets speaking the words of God and bringing the presence of God to us. That's very powerful. And what that means is that we too can have that beautiful union with God and be that for others. Remember that not only did Jesus say he was the light of the world, but he said, you are the light of the world, right? So not only is Jesus bread of life, but I would add we are bread of life, right? And we can also feed one another in the world. So another way to hear these sayings in John is a way of Jesus saying, I am one with God. I am one with the ground of being, as Tillich referred to God. I am one with the very essence of life, that which sustains all things, the bread, the energy that vibrates and becomes all things with God in God. I like contemplating this interpretation, Jesus speaking from ecstatic union with God, because it reminds us of our own need for that connection and that joy and letting God work through us. That's a joyful thing to do. Let's think a little bit more about bread itself. Well, one thing is it's a building block food. It's so basic. And for that reason, it really reminds me of the life force of all things, the bread of life, the very essence of life. And we know that Christ is in the very essence of life. All things are made through Christ. Christ is in every atom, every particle the bread of life, the very life, energy of life. The other thing about bread is that it's meant to feed. And the very essence of life is giving away, right? The very most beautiful essence and principle of life is love and giving oneself away that Jesus modeled in giving his life for us and becoming that bread for us. Some of you may know the old British folk song and myth of John Barleycorn. And John Barleycorn has to die in order for the beverage to be made, okay? That's kind of an old drinking song, really. But Jesus is the better barley corn who gives himself away for us to become food for us. Now, bread is the bread of love and compassion, isn't it? It's the bread of love and compassion in this sense because that's the very essence of Jesus and the very essence of what life is all about. So when we become bread of life, we are those who share compassion with the world. Bread also complements other foods well. The bread represents not only Jesus, the person of Jesus, but his teachings. The Aramaic word for bread includes the nuance of understanding. So as Jesus gives himself to us, he's giving the wisdom or teachings of God to us as well, giving us understanding. And as we understand what God is all about, we are able to feed others. So the teachings of Jesus 
and the teachings of other spiritual paths complement one another. I think of Jesus as the bread of life and Buddha as the vegetables. His teachings may be the vegetables in that meal, right? <laughs> Teachers of compassion. Again, the bread of life connects us to all of life. Hildegard of Bingen, for example, said everything that is in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth is penetrated with connectedness, penetrated with relatedness. God has arranged everything in the universe in consideration of everything else. Meister Eckhart said all creatures are interdependent. So the bread of life also reminds us of our connection to all of life, right? Not just part of life. That's what Jesus was all about, too, connecting with all of life, all people, all living things. And bread also has to be fresh, and I like that, too, because the Israelites had to receive that manna daily. They couldn't store it up where it would go bad. We know Elijah, when he was fed by the ravens and given bread and meat from God, it was a daily thing, twice daily, in fact. And so that reminds us, too, that in receiving the teachings of Jesus and in relating to Jesus, it needs to be a daily activity. We need to daily be asking God for new insights, new revelations. Bread, as I said to the children, also comes in many varieties. I think it was Bishop Martin McLee who first really showed me that bread could be a symbol of that diversity when he met with the clergy. And it was our very first meeting with him and we had communion together, and he had the table just full of different breads, all different colors, all different sizes and shapes and tastes. And he talked about that. He talked about how we in the New York Annual Conference have some different theologies on some things, and we have different ethnicities and different interests and different gifts. And he said, but we're all part of the bread of life, all these varieties of bread. And it was, it was powerful. I'll never forget it. And may he rest in peace. So the bread of life represents many things. Christ himself, his teachings, the essence of life in which Christ is present, our connectedness and our diversity. And as we get in touch with this, we're able to feed others. One of the things that really got my attention recently, and probably many of you too, was the killing of Cecil the Lion. Now some people say that was overblown because many people are being killed unjustly every day and, and I agree that we need to pay attention to that as well. What particularly disturbed me about that particular story, however, was the betrayal involved in it with the element of food. Here we are today talking about bread of life and this lion was lured by his bread of life, meat, and then killed after trusting humans. It reminded me a little bit of the Judas story, betrayed for money, betrayed with a kiss, or betrayed with meat. A betrayal in essence of the laws of love and compassion that are part of the essence of life. A betrayal of the bread of life, we might say. But we see that happen with human beings too. We see betrayal of trust by public servants. We see betrayal of trust, sometimes even in families where there's abuse. We see it again and again. But friends, if we are to be bread, bread of life, we need to stay connected to Jesus, his wisdom. We need to stay connected to all things with compassion. And when we do that, we have joy like Jesus had. We have joy in being able to say, I am the bread of life given for you. And we can say, I too am the bread of life given for you and for you and for you. And we can minister to a hurting world. I asked at the early service, what bread are you? And people had some humorous answers to that. So you might want to think about that. What bread are you? What kind of food are you? Ron said he's rye because he has a wry sense of humor. I said, well, I think today I'll choose a bagel because we have bagels after church. They're holy and they remind us of interfaith relations. That was my try at that. We'll see what you can come up with. What kind of bread are you and why? How is God working in your life to help you feed others with the wisdom of God, the love of God, the compassion of God? And remember that in order to do that, we have to be willing to be broken, just like the bread on the communion table is broken. Sometimes it's in our times of brokenness, our difficult times, our challenging times, 
that we can be used by God most, and that's a paradox. It's not just when we're feeling good. It's not just when we're feeling strong. It may not even be when we're feeling our strongest in our faith, but it might be in those broken times that God says, I will use you as bread of life. So thanks be to God and to Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to show us the way. Amen. And let us join now in our prayer of compassion. Dear God, we confess that we have tried to feed our hunger and quench our thirst with the food and drink and distractions of this world. But the pleasure is short-lived and our souls are left dry and in need. We confess our need of your son Jesus, who meets us right where we are, and fills us with your love. Help us to pass on what we have received so that others might be blessed. Amen. Friends, in Christ, we are made new each day. Thanks be to God. And at this time, we will take up our collection for the work of God through this church. Let us rise and dedicate our gifts. Oh God, as you have blessed us in so many ways, especially with the very gift of life, 
so we pour out our lives for others. May these offerings do the work of you who sent Jesus and who send us forth into the world. For we pray in his name. Amen. Please be seated. Today, for our pastoral prayer, I'm going to be sharing a uh, prayer that is basically a translation of the Lord's Prayer by Neil Douglas Klotz, and then we'll follow it with the traditional Lord's Prayer. And it's a beautiful prayer that talks about the unity with the bread of life. So, and then I'll be adding some of my words to it. So let us pray. O oh, Bertha, Father, Mother of the Cosmos, you create all that moves in light. O oh, thou, the breathing life of all, creator of the shimmering sound that touches us, respiration of all worlds, we hear you breathing in and out in silence. Focus your light within us. Make it useful as the rays of a beacon show the way. Help us breathe one holy breath, feeling only you. This creates a shrine inside in wholeness. Create your reign of unity now through our fiery hearts and our willing hands. Let your counsel rule our lives as we find your love in ours. Let heaven and nature form a new creation. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. Out of you, the vital force producing and sustaining all life, every virtue. Truly, power to these statements, may they be the ground from which all my actions grow. O oh God, our gracious creator, we do praise you for the wisdom you have spoken to us, for modeling us the way in Christ, who became one with your way. Today we pray that we might use words that give life to others, that nurture and feed their souls, that we might let our eyes speak your love, our hearts and hands be used for your glory. Holy One, we pray that we might extend your grace and your compassion and your life-giving, life-renewing power. We pray today for all who are sick. We ask that you bless them by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask the Spirit to intercede for each one with sighs too deep for words. We pray for all who travel this summer for your mercies. We pray today for the people of Taiwan, the people of China, hit by a typhoon. We pray for our nation's leaders and for world leaders. Breathe your shalom, your peace and wholeness through your creation. Let kindness fill our hearts and your will be done. Hear us now as we pray the Lord's Prayer in the traditional version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our final hymn is number 178. We will be singing verses 1, 2, and 3. Please stand if you are able.
now may your soul be fed continually as you do the good work of God. May the living water offered by Christ quench your thirst. Go forth in peace. Amen. Amen.